How does a sleeve gastrectomy actually work? The answer will surprise you and impress you. Hi, I'm David Brown from Idaho Bariatric and Metabolic Institute, or Idaho BMI. I'm a bariatric surgeon. 98% of what I do is bariatric surgery, metabolism, nutrition, physiology. Um, almost always, things relating to the body and physiology are so much more complicated than we like to think. This is absolutely true with obesity, diabetes, and with bariatric surgery. The most commonly performed operation, bariatric operation today in America is called the sleeve gastrectomy. In this video, I'm going to explain how the sleeve gastrectomy actually works. Now, this is going to be a pretty technical science-y video. Um, I love this stuff. It's fascinating, and I think people will be shocked, surprised, and impressed uh, by what really is going on when a person undergoes this operation. Now, uh, sleeve gastrectomy is almost always done laparoscopically, so through small incisions using a camera. Uh, this operation takes me typically about 30 minutes, but the basic idea is you go in and you free up the stomach from its attachments to other structures, and you staple along the stomach and end up removing about 75 to 80% of the stomach, and what is left is a stomach that's in the shape of a tube or a shirt sleeve. Some people will say it's in the shape of a banana. You get the idea. So it's important to note that there are myths about how this operation works. The traditional idea is that, hey, you're making the stomach smaller, therefore people can't eat as much and they lose weight. That is extremely outdated, a very primitive view of how the operation works. Um, other, maybe a more recent idea is that, hey, there's a type of cell in the stomach that generates a hormone called ghrelin. And ghrelin, um, one of the things it does is it stimulates hunger pains. And so a common idea is that, hey, by stapling the stomach, removing a large part of it, you're removing those cells that generate, generate this hunger hormone. And that's how it works. Again, extremely simplistic. It's far more complicated, far more nuanced and impressive than that. So, to really understand how the sleeve gastro gastrectomy works, we have to understand a little bit about physiology. Now, fundamental to all of this is the idea that the brain and the gut are intimately connected. Uh, think of the brain as a computer, a supercomputer. It's far more than that, but that's really where all the controls are for almost everything. The master controls for a person's weight, for their appetite, their hunger pains, what they crave, metabolism, glucose levels, hormones, everything. Everything ultimately is uh, controlled by centers in the brain. Now, every computer requires input in order to function properly. And one of the main inputs into the brain comes from the gut. Um, I reviewed this in another video, but the GI tract, mouth to anus, is about 30 feet long. And in that 30 feet, there's over 400 square feet of surface area. So it's a massive surface. It's our largest interface with the world around us, even though it's inside of us. Well, most of our taste buds are in the intestines on that surface area. Uh, that 400 square feet surface area is packed with specialized cells enteroendocrine cells, neuropods, neuropod cells. These are sensors or receptors, and they are detecting what's inside of the intestines and in the stomach, and they're signaling uh, to the brain uh, what they're detecting. Now, that transmission of information from the gut to the brain, almost all of it is through what's called the vagus nerve. Very important nerve. It is... It is the freeway of information between the gut and the brain. So incredibly important. Now, um, the vagus nerve. You know, a lot of uh, diagrams of the vagus nerve and the stomach show six, maybe a dozen, maybe 20 branches of that vagus nerve. Um, I use these diagrams, but they're incredibly um, inadequate. The truth is that the vagus nerve has 
thousands, tens of thousands, millions of branches that literally cover, they're actually in the wall of the stomach and the intestines in a couple of different layers, but they literally cover uh, the stomach and the gastrointestinal tract. Now, there's a group out of uh, Purdue University who recently, meaning in the last two or three years, uh, made the argument based on anatomy, physiology, that due to the connections, the manner of the way these tiny little branches of the vagus nerve are connected, networked together in the stomach, in the wall of the stomach, uh, they argue that they function as smart nodes or smart terminos. In other words, it's so sophisticated the way these nerves, tiny nerve uh, fibers connect to each other. It's a lot like a computer that there is local control, local management of many things relating to the function of the stomach. Well, what we find is that in people who struggle with obesity and diabetes, the density or the number of nerve fibers in the wall of their stomach uh, is less than half normal. So those tiny little branches of the vagus nerve, there's fewer of them, and, and you have to believe that the networks that they're forming are dysfunctional. Um, so, um, here's my theory, speculation, but it, it makes sense to me, that when we're doing a sleeve gastrectomy, and we're stapling and removing 75 or 80% of the stomach, we are excluding the bad data dumping into the vagus nerve system of communication from these dysfunctional networks in the wall of the stomach of people who are obese and who have obesity. In other words, in a person who is obese, has diabetes and these other metabolic problems, there's a neurological problem. There's neurological dysfunction and you can see it in the anatomy in the wall of the stomach. And because of that dysfunctional networking, those dysfunctional networks are sending bad information, bad data into the vagus nerve going up into the brain. And by doing a sleeve gastrectomy, we're simply excluding the source of that bad data. Now, in my experience, I have noticed two things in patients who have these operations. There is an overnight change in many neurological uh, phenomena. People report that their sense of smell, sense of taste, all kinds of things are very different the day after surgery. Um, now, there are other changes that take longer, weeks and months, and these have to do with weight, metabolism, uh, perception of food, uh, relationship with food, all kinds of things that really are neurologically based. Again, those, are, those take longer, weeks and months. Um, and studies in rodents, rats, mice, show that you do these operations, a sleeve gastrectomy, gastric bypass, yes, you can do these things in rodents, you do those operations and you sacrifice those rodents, meaning you you kill them and you, you dissect and examine their nervous system, the vagus nerve, the brain. What you find is week, two weeks, three weeks after their bariatric procedure, there, there is new growth, almost an explosion of growth of really what are nerve fibers from the base of the brain um, in a place called the nucleus tractus solitarius. It's sort of a clear, clearinghouse filter of all the sensory information coming from the gut through the vagus nerve and into the brain. And from there, those signals go to almost every part of the brain. Uh, it's an incredible computer. But again, in these rodents, you can see um, weeks after these operations, changes in the anatomy of the brain in the nerve connections, uh, the connections between brain cells. Again, that's something that takes weeks and months. It doesn't that won't explain the changes that we see overnight in the sense of smell, taste, and these other things. Um, so my theory here is that by excluding that bad data in the stomach, the stomach neurological networks, it is resetting, it's, it's refining or making better the signaling 
uh, from the gut into the brain very quickly, pretty much right when we exclude that portion of the stomach. And so really the bigger picture is that because of this new signaling and people seem to be almost hypersensitive after these operations, a lot of people will say, man, I can feel everything I swallow go down and that can be distressing. And some people say it hurts temporarily. Clearly they have to go slow. They can't consume as much, but there's a lot of changes happening overnight and all those sensory, new sensory signals are generating a condition of the brain where it's so malleable. We say it's plastic, this idea of neuroplasticity. So you back up, imagine watching a three-month-old baby, can't even sit up. And you sit and watch, you don't engage, you don't try to communicate with the baby, you just watch. And you know that that baby is processing and learning uh, so much every single minute. Well, the reason for that is that just about everything the baby is experiencing or encountering is new or novel. It's the novelty of experience that is driving that brain development in that three-month-old baby. Well, in our bariatric surgery patients, they have an explosion of new sensory signals, and it can be overwhelming. It's the new signals that are generating this condition of the brain where it's so plastic or malleable. And I argue, and the evidence really points in the direction of our ability to reprogram a person's brain, those control centers in the brain, and the networks through which they communicate over about a six-month period after surgery. So that's what's going on with a sleeve gastrectomy. It's far more complicated, interesting, and impressive than what we have traditionally thought. Understanding this actually... Um, highlights the idea that these operations are actually far more powerful than have been recognized traditionally. And understanding this allows us to approach it differently, to use these operations in a different way, to literally reprogram, repeating simple tasks every day. By doing this, um, we can change sort of all the presets, the defaults, the set points in a person's brain. And we know this by functional brain scans, functional MRI, PET scans. They show us of uh, the changes that are happening in a person's brain after these operations. It's dramatic. It's very impressive. So that's how the sleeve gastrectomy works. It's fascinating. There's uh, so many questions to answer in the future, but it's incredibly important for people to understand both the cause of obesity and diabetes and these metabolic diseases, as well as what is by far the most effective treatment for these diseases, and that is bariatric surgery. This is what's going on. This is how these operations work. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, if it's been helpful, uh, go to our Idaho BMI uh, YouTube channel, subscribe. There's a lot more content. I'm David Brown. Thank you for joining us.